Welcome back to Fay Design Virtual Education. In this video, we'll be doing a tour of some architecture, interior design, and landscape architecture firms in Arkansas. Fay Jones School graduates can choose from a variety of career paths, including working for firms that could be large or small, residential or commercial projects, and client diversity. BR Architecture has been in Northwest Arkansas for the last 15 years. Um, 2010, we moved from Lowell to, to Bentonville. So we've been in this part of this space since 2010. Um, to about two years ago, there was a major re renovation addition to the building that allowed us to, um, to expand our, our area in the building. And so in the last month, the remodel is complete. We haven't branded and completed our organization of, of all of our stuff. Um, so at this point in time, um, we're still working on, on the fin final finishing touches to complete the office remodel. So the work um, that BR does, we, we focus on our, our strengths and um, you know, we, we do hospitality in our Kansas City office, and we have a little bit of hospitality in other offices, um, grocery, retail, industrial, uh, office, and um, most recently we've been trying, we've been working to develop an industrial team, uh, work on warehouse projects and uh, fulfillment centers, especially with the current trends in um, shopping from home and having delivered to your home, um, fulfillment centers are becoming very popular. BR Architecture is a diverse firm. Um, we have licensed architects, um, student interns, um, design uh, graduates, we have interior architects. Um, we have had urban planning components in the past. Um, we do actually have a structural engineer on, on staff who reviews our, our work from a structural perspective. Um, we do strongly encourage all of our staff become licensed or certified in their, in their area of expertise and um, strongly recommending we actually do everything we can from a financial standpoint as far as um, getting your record started with NCARB to providing study materials and then even paying for the tests um, to become licensed. Uh, the, the higher quality employee that we have, the better risk management for us as a firm. A typical project duration, again, depends on the actual project type. Um, the shortest project would be, you know, three to six months. The normal project would be, you know, somewhere in the six to 12 month range. And then some of the more complex projects might be as long as three to five years. The office culture BR is really, uh, it's more smaller firm culture and um, you know, we've worked hard over the years to keep a culture similar to when the firm first started and started growing. Um, so we, we have a lot of company meetings, we keep connected with, with the um, other offices. Um, we have teams that may be a person in Philadelphia, a person in Atlanta person in Kansas City, San Francisco, Benville, Arkansas. So um, we're very well connected. Um, we have a, a kind of a common cultural um, term to work hard and play hard and try to, uh, you know, focus, get our work done, and then still have time to have fun. Yes, so my name's Allie Quinlan. I'm the principal of Flintlock Lab, which is landscape, architecture, and building. We do a little bit of everything. So um, I have a staff of six people, and we do landscape, architecture, design, architecture. We do some interiors, and we do a lot of master planning, and, and we even do some small development. We do a lot of different types of projects. Our landscape projects tend to be really large. So um, we're working on the Cultural Arts Corridor right now, which is a 50-acre um, site in downtown uh, Fayetteville. So it's a Walton Family Foundation Design Excellence Grant project. So we're working on that with Nelson Bird Waltz, um, redoing the streetscapes along West Avenue between Prairie Street and Dixon, um, developing out the Fay Jones Woods into um, an accessible park, improving the Greenway, and doing a civic plaza, a three-acre civic, civic plaza at the corner of Dixon Street and West Avenue next to the Walton Art Center. 
Um, we also do a lot of smaller projects. So we do everything from small infill houses for developers. We've done a, a series of um, five to 800 square foot houses um, that are being built in South Fayetteville um, by us and by, by some other small developers um, and a lot of non-typical arrangements um, of housing. So trying to get additional housing units that meet you know, small, small household types. Um, you know, a large majority of households are now one and two people and most of our housing stock is three and four bedroom houses. So we do a lot of work trying to fit um, infill housing, you know, small one and two bedroom houses um, or units into um, neighborhood settings. So we do a lot of garage apartments um, and kind of hidden duplexes, duplexes you can't tell are two units um, and courtyard housing. So a lot of really dense small housing downtown too. So we do really big landscape projects and really small architecture. I think we do really non-typical work in that we are we're doing a little bit of everything. You know, design is design. Um, so we we often get brought in to do master planning and then end up doing the architecture and the landscape architecture on projects. We off, we do our, a lot of our own interiors as well. Um, so we we have a pretty con consistent you know hand on the project start to finish, and it allows us to think about things holistically. Um, and come up with elegant solutions that you might not be able to do if the individual designers were siloed at separate firms as subconsultants. Um, we love doing land planning, we love doing master planning. Um, I guess, too, one of the things that we're um, unusual in, in really loving is code, zoning, entitlement experiences. Um, I was on the planning commission here in Fayetteville for a few years and, and have gotten, have turned into a total planning nerd. So we, we do a lot of projects that we're trying to do unique things within what's currently allowed. And so we love to start at the master planning phase, come up with all the different options somebody could be doing on a site, help introduce ideas that somebody may not even be thinking about program, programmatically, um, and help, help develop that vision of the project and then move into helping design each individual aspect of it. So our design process, um, is sometimes several years. Um, we do tend to, um, I, I tend to be you know, in on the design of any of the projects that we're doing, um, but we, we tend to have um, kind of a, a long-term and holistic investment, and a lot of our clients are, are um, repeat clients. You know, most of the people that we work with um, are small developers or large developers um, who are doing kind of repeat ongoing projects, and so we tend to work with them long-term at developing and, and really helping them flesh out the, the vision that they have for projects. The Cultural Arts Corridor is definitely our biggest project, um, both in terms of scale and budget and um, ambition, I think, in terms of the project ambition itself. Um, it also has been one of our most complicated um, and big picture in terms of public input. Um, you know, we're, we're doing a big redevelopment of the city, of a big piece of the downtown core, and it, that project really has become kind of a canvas for everybody to put on a lot of their concerns about what they think the city or cities in general aren't doing well, right? So it's trying to, um, from public input, you know, people are wanting it to solve affordable housing and to solve, um, you know, Work, work for artists and solve safety downtown um, and solve multi-generational access to, to cities and you know solve equity and um, physical access and you know it's kind of taking on all these big picture um, problems and so you know we've done a large series of, of public input sessions we've talked to a lot of citizens you know many times about the things that the project can and can't solve um, and so it's really definitely our, our biggest, most ambitious project. One of my favorites is, is relatively for our office, a very small project. Um, we did the landscape at the Ozark Natural Foods Co-op that just opened and it's you know a block from our office and across the street from my house. And it's been a real labor of love. Um, we did a, the planting list for it is all both native um, to the Ozarks and also edible or medicinal. And so we did an enormous amount of research um, you know, into this plant list that really fits a mission and a vision that they had at increasing literacy of um, the use of native plants. Not just is it native, but what does it do? And so we, we've had a lot of fun working with them. The Ozark Natural Foods team is phenomenal. Um, Modus did a really wonderful job on design on that one. And, and so it's a really small scale project, but one that we've really been able to dig into and, and love and are there every day. So this is the Fulbright Building. Um, it was the Fayetteville Public Library before it moved, to, moved further downtown. Um, and it's set up as a creative suite, which is a great model. Um, it's been wonderful for us. So there's three really nice conference rooms. Um, it looks you know, really professional, um, but you're renting just a single office. So you've got access to shared bathrooms and break rooms um, and Google Calendar scheduling of the conference rooms. Um, but the individual offices are, are what is, what's rented. So we've moved around in the building. We used to have two offices and a um, kind of an admin space, 
um, and we're now in one bigger shared office. But so it, it's a lot of different structures um, that have a lot of shared access to components, which especially works well um, for us since we need really great conference rooms. We host big meetings for big teams pretty often. Uh, my firm is technically just me. Um, I employ subcontractors to do my construction work. I'm, technically, I'm a design builder, so I design out of my office and then go into the field and build a lot of my projects with subcontractors. Well, I've had the pleasure and honor of working with um, a couple of great architects here in, in Fayetteville. Um, uh, Marlon Blackwell, Chris Barabo, uh, the Skiles, Albert and Lisa Skiles, um, and some others. And uh, I think the collaboration between landscape architecture and, and the architecture is, has been the most, no, most notable projects, anyway. Yeah. Typically, a project will go through a design stage that lasts um, through a couple of different drawings. Um, and usually it's, usually it's two to three weeks um, from very loose conceptual sketches to a more defined schematic and, you know, and then final design stage. We're working on a park right, a five acre park right now that is tr still trying to get out of the conceptual stage and get into a schematic stage and we've had to go back and forth because it's, you know, it's a pretty big project with a fairly large budget. When we got here the house was probably the least interesting house on the street. Very plain. It was a cold gray color. Um, you sort of stumbled up to the front door and stumbled out of the front door to get to the driveway. Um, so we proposed raising the, um, the entrance to the front door onto a, a patio. So you would could be able to come out of the front door onto a raised area that was level with the interior of the, of the house um, and then come down gracious stairs to the driveway through a procession of uh, seating area, uh, planting area, and the gabion walls that contained the deck and created a little bit of a visual, um, a visual block um, and a little bit more privacy. Um, and the wood that we attached to the front of the house was, is all uh, local red cedar. Kind of came from a, a mill just 50, yard, 50 yards, 50 miles away. And um, uh, we wanted to basically give the, the house uh, some interest over the, the, um, the, the siding that was there to begin with. Um, and then to give some protection from the elements, we, we built the pergola above the seating area um, uh, with, a, with a clear transparent roof on it to allow light down in and light to go back into the house as well. Um, we also added a large window to one of the bedrooms, which is just a steel box and like a seating window. Um, and just some other little details like furniture design. So Moda Studio was established in uh, August of 2008 and um, there were two partners at that time and it all started um, with one school project, the Green Forest Middle School in Green Forest, Arkansas. Out of the 30 people at Modus, um, we have about five who are in the fabrication shop, and that's a mixture of, of all different backgrounds, um, but some of them are artists, some of them have their own art galleries in town, some are sculptors, um, and then within the studio itself, uh, we have uh, a few interior designers, um, we have uh, some very experienced licensed architects, and we have uh, administration, and we have recent graduates from the architecture school. So it's, um, it's really a, a design collective, so to speak. The studio culture at Modus uh, is definitely a collaborative environment. Um, all ideas are, are considered. 
all voices are considered. Um, we have such a, a diverse um, group of backgrounds uh, that our designers are coming from and that really adds to the overall culture and atmosphere. Um, we like to talk about um, a culture of work hard, play hard. Um, you know, we, we like to have fun here too. Uh, we have spike ball tournaments and uh, we, we have three or four teams in the AIA bowling tournament every year. Um, and we just, we just think that that helps to, um, you know, develop our teams and allows them to work together um, in a really positive way. I think something unique that Modus is known for is definitely our fabrication shop. Uh, it's right next door to the studio. Um, we're constantly interacting um, between the, the fabricators and the architects and designers in the studio. Um, it's something that allows us to create things, architecture or furniture or whatever that is, um, at a level of craft that our clients really seek. Our typical process um, for approaching a new project with a client is first to listen. Um, there's a lot to learn. Every project's different. Um, we definitely don't come into the room with any preconceived notions of what a client's building should be. Um, we listen, we ask questions, we evaluate all of that information before we ever put a you know, pen or pencil to paper. Um, and from there, we, we have uh, lots of ongoing meetings with clients. We, we, we form a specific team with various experts um, for that particular project type. And then, um, you know, the, the fun begins. You know, you, you, you come up with designs and, and you run it by the client and um, you get a lot of different voices on the project. Um, and then, um, you know, you take it out to the real world and, and uh, work with contractors and, and get it built. So my advice for um, you know, students going into design fields like architecture and interior design uh, would be to go ahead and practice time management now. Um, you know, get your work done, get it done early, and then spend the extra time doing it better. And once you've done that, you know, be sure and make time to relax, make some time for yourself. Um, design professions can consume you um, and you really have to remember to um, you know carve out some time for yourself to relax and that's and that's really what you have to do you have to make the time there's not just time laid out there for that you really have to make that time um, so I would definitely I would definitely work on that now do your homework then play video games <laughs> So the Evans Treehouse at Garvin Woodland Gardens in Hot Springs um, came about um, with the client approaching us and saying they want to uh, create something um, in the woods, something mysterious, um, but would pique the interest of children um, to come back to nature, um, you know, get off the screens, go back out to the woods. Um, and it was designed around the theme of dendrology, the study of trees and wooded plants. And it, it allows um, kids to, to actually learn about trees while they're up in the trees, right? Almost like inside of a tree. Um, it's got a, a very um, you know, biomorphic looking form. Um, we call it the wood slug. It kind of looks like different things to a lot of different people. Um, but ultimately it has this sort of mysterious nature to it and it, it draws you in, makes you want to see exactly what's in there. Um, and uh, we created it, um, you know, using materials that felt natural, something that would sort of blend in a little bit with its natural environment. Um, so there's this, uh, you know, these thermalized uh, wood uh, ribs. Uh, built around this this very light steel frame um, and it, it kind of just floats up in the trees. Wow! As you can see, there are many different opportunities in architecture, interior design, and landscape architecture. The opportunity to design and create is a lasting joy. 
Now you have an idea of what it is like to work at firms of different sizes and on projects of different scopes.